Call the meeting of the president and board of trustees to order roll call. <coughs> Trustee Benucci. <coughs> Trustee Fay. Here. Trustee Lamb. Here. Trustee Peck. Here. Trustee Rasich. Mayor Collins. Here. Rise for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. We're seeking a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting and committee of the whole workshop held on January 12th. So Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? All, right. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Presidential comments? I just have one. Uh, the other day, Mr. Ernie Banks died, and he was so nice to come to the village here two years ago and uh, signed hats, dolls, T-shirts, whatever he had. Uh, Really had a nice visit with the gentleman, and uh, he truly will be missed. So that's all I have. Trustees' comments? I have one. I came across a feature on the city of Naperville's website uh, earlier in the day, and it, I think it's an application or a, a keystroke that we could add to ours. It uh, lets residents and visitors know about parking availability in downtown Naperville, and Michael has it on the screen there. Uh, it, it also gives information about what streets can be parked on, uh, what time, what hours of the day, what hours it's prohibited from parking. Uh, I think it would be uh, worthwhile to explore. Pardon? Yeah. Are there any other trustee comments? Thank you, Michael. No other trustee comments. This would be the time for public comments, three to five minutes. There are no public comments, and we'll proceed with the workshop. First item on the agenda is administration planning, building, and miscellaneous funds, fiscal year 2015-16 budget presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, tonight is the second night in our series of uh, discussions on the various uh, corporate accounts. As you know, we did the streets department at the last committee, the whole meeting. Uh, tonight will be administration planning, building, and miscellaneous funds and then as well a discussion on our financial policies. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Tracy Pleckham who will uh, start off the conversation on all the uh, various corporate funds and then uh, uh, separate presentations by Michael uh, Garrigan and Dean Marquez. Thank you. Uh, what you have in your packet tonight are drafts of um, the budgets that Administrator Mur Murphy mentioned. We're going to start with the packet um, that is the Administration Finance Summary. Within the first um, few pages is the admin finance budget, proposed budget for fiscal year 16. It rep represents about a 1.3% increase overall, uh, 6.187 million uh, for this current fiscal year is the budget, and for next fiscal year it's at 6.270 million. Keep in mind just over 3.2, actually almost 3.3 million is relating to contractual services for uh, the village's refuse pickup. That's included within this unit. Um, within this unit also is the legislative management services and administration, community relations, facility management, human resources, and information technology as well. As we go through the, the budget document, I'd like to point out um, the major uh, difference. Most of the budgets that you'll see are either um, flat line, meaning no changes uh, within the budget itself. Uh, the only one that we have to highlight is uh, the in the IT division. Uh, the proposal is to bring the current part-time GIS position to full-time. Um, as the board knows, we've been moving in the direction of a little more higher-end technology as it relates to our mapping, as well as deploying iPads out in the field. Um, and I think you've seen some of the work that, that GIS has brought forward uh, to the village. And with that, staff is recommending that we bring that position to a full-time uh, position. Currently, it's at 28 hours a week, if I remember correctly. Other than that, uh, any other highlights within the budget um, in these particular divisions that we're speaking to? I guess what I would bring up on page 2 of 11, within the legislative program, we have put in some possible funding to update the boardroom as it relates to the cable operations. Um, 
that's down in the cable TV line item. So you'll see that's the reason why that dollar amount jumped up. Uh, that will come back to the board for approval, but we did uh, highlight some funding availability for that purpose this year. Additional training for possible new trustees as well is included in that, in that division. Administration division um, is straightforward. There's no additional hires. Um, and as you can see from the budget, there's minimal increase within uh, the division, mostly salaries and benefit relation related to uh, increases through there. Tracy, can I ask a question? You sure can. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, under administration, why Illinois unemployment insurance has dropped that significantly? That's directly related to the layoffs that occurred back in 2007, I believe was the year, 2009. If it's it was 2009. 2009, sorry. Um, and now we're seeing a flattening of the unemployment costs that we have for the village. So um, the good news is, is that our, our costs have, de have decreased. Uh, and when I'm looking at the reserve report, we're actually in a decent position. We utilize first nonprofit for unemployment costs and it's been a good result for us uh, going forward. It actually streamlined some of the unemployment costs over the downturn uh, and the bad times. We've, we were able to um, not have to pay all of the costs up front. We were able to stagger our costs throughout a couple fiscal years, which worked out well. And then one more question on mm -hmm. that page. Um, give me an example of contractual services. Within the administration program itself? Um, we utilize contractual services for things such as um, recording fees. Nope, that's up top. We have contractual services for, I'm trying to think now, what's in that line item? Um, I'd have to look that up. I mean, off Is that in administration head, I, you're looking at? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be, um, if you don't mind, uh, retail strategies gets paid for out of that uh, fund. They get half out of there and half out of portion of it, yeah. Fund. As well, then there are just if you have other studies or other uh, projects or details that the village board is interested in having done, that's where we usually grab those funds from. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Question: More than half of the uh, administrative finance cost is uh, contractual services. Uh, Dusty Fay just asked you know, about a piece of it. I went through the various sheets and totaled it up. It's about 848,000, so we're missing about three million. Is that uh, waste management? Right, waste management is on page two at the top under non-divisional, three million two hundred seventy-eight okay, thousand two hundred thirty-six. I looked through every page and didn't see that. Yeah. Looking in the, underneath it, I'd look for a separate line item. Okay, good. Uh, the other question I have quickly is uh, benefits. Uh, it varies by organization, but is it the 35% range of the salaries? Yeah, just slightly under that, I would say. It's right closer to 30, okay. 28 to 30. Anytime time we add somebody, it's uh, that, the salary plus the 30 percent, so. Correct. Okay. Uh, one other quick, we haven't gotten to it yet perhaps, but uh, on the IT software and licensing, uh, it seems to have taken a step up, which is perhaps understandable. We just expanded it. Uh, uh, is it going to stay up every year? It's going to be about $200,000, or is it something that goes back down because we made a big purchase. Uh. There's uh, several projects we're looking to implement this next fiscal year. Um, so a lot of that is one-time costs. Uh, one of the big projects we're looking to do is combine the police department and village email system and move it offline to an, a hosted provider. Uh, in the long run, it equals out to about the same cost um, versus buying the equipment and maintaining ourselves. So there is a licensing cost associated with that, but the bulk of that is one-time cost to implement certain things for projects. Well, next year it might come down somewhat. Somewhat, yes. 150,000 maybe or um, yeah there's about uh, off the top of my head 17 to 20,000 of one-time costs this year or okay. this upcoming fiscal year Good, thank you I just have a question on possibly Tracy or Brian on page two we're um, back to waste management uh, from fiscal year 2012 to fiscal year proposed uh, 2016 we're seeing about a half million dollar increase I'm assuming that's um, in conjunction with the contract that we approved with waste management correct that contract expire and if we don't know offhand it's okay you can email the board and so we all know I'll have to get back to you on that uh, five years yeah it was a five-year contract I'm just trying to remember was it two years ago that we approved that maybe no two years ago I think two, we're yeah. two year of a five-year contract yeah. that's what I need to know thank you 
some of it is growth related and has been a lot of growth within the village but some of it is due to additional homes coming on And yeah, as we go along, if there's any other questions, feel free to jump in. Uh, community relations, if we w could move to page four, you'll see it's a flat budget for next year. Um, programming is considering to be the same. Uh, no additional expenditures related to uh, different types of services being provided, all status quo. Facility management on page five um, remains the same. It's actually decreased, and that is uh, specifically relating to building improvements um, being reduced by $30,000. What is Tracy? The on page five, the building improvements line item was budgeted at eighty. Um, back in fisc in this current fiscal year, it's been reduced to fifty thousand. And in that regard, it really is more a question of maintenance and upkeep on our existing facilities. That isn't uh, there. There aren't any program funds for that at this time, uh, but it does cover, you know, as. Alan knows uh, every so often things break, and so we, uh, we have those funds available. I only pick on Alan because the last time he said something about it not breaking, it, it broke. <laughs> so. <laughs> Within our Human Resources Division, we have um, two full-time employees uh, that handle most of the, the work out of that division. That budget this fiscal year is uh, at 278000 It's being proposed to be at 274000 primarily because of reduction in benefit costs relating to choices that the employees are making for their, for their um, insurance benefits. We've touched on IT, um, which is on page 7. And uh, if you have any other questions on IT-related issues or, or um, programs, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Otherwise, that is the majority of the administration component of the general fund budget. So um, if there are or aren't any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask now or later in the presentation. Otherwise, I'd be happy to move it along to planning and have Michael speak a little more towards his division in the next fiscal year. Tracy, I just have one question. Sure. Regarding IT, mm -hmm. uh, does the current proposed total reflect the uh, new hire? It reflects the par current part-time position becoming full-time, correct? Mm -hmm. Also, uh, you, you were very quick in covering it, uh, Tracy, but um, with regard to our health care and our wellness program and our wellness initiative, uh, the successes that we've been seeing in that have actually resulted in some rather substantive, um, it's hard to call them savings because we're still seeing rate increases. However, our rate increases as compared to our peer group and as, as it relates to uh, the other members within uh, the, uh, uh, s is that SWAM or is that SWARM? SWAM is health. Um, it's a peer group that we're uh, in with. Uh, our rate increases are actually much lower than our peers and um, it really has to do a lot with our uh, wellness program and how well our employees have been participating. This past year we had uh, 80% of our employees participate in the uh, wellness program, which is a rather um, remarkable benchmark to hit. So just wanted to share that news. Right. And we've budgeted um, a 5% increase in health insurance costs for this next fiscal year. Um, what we're hearing for renewals at this point is that we will meet, if not exceed that, meaning that our increase will probably be less than 5% globally, which is a great um, a great response to what we've done for the wellness program. Yes, thank you. Um, with, regards, with respect to planning uh, for the 2016 budget, uh, we are proposing a, a projected budget of approximately $471,688. Again, we are proposing to continue uh, uh, having two full certified planners along with a full-time secretary on staff. As you well know, the planning department uh, is the main administrative liaison with the development community. We continue to, we'll continue to be the zoning administrator. Uh, we'll interpret the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive plan, but most importantly, be the main liaison, not only with the Historic Preservation Commission and the Planning Commission, but um, also the economic development aspect regards the development community. We anticipate that 2015-16 will see a, a real continued substantial uptick 
uh, in new residential uh, development. I specifically have outlined uh, in my staff um, summary uh, some of the properties that we anticipate uh, we'll see uh, potential entitlement uh, this year, um, 2015. Those include the Solomon property, which is just north of Edwards. We anticipate that that concept will be coming before uh, the village board and hopefully in the next several months uh, for entitlement. In addition to that property, we're also looking at the village center project just west of the village hall, a very important project. We anticipate that that will potentially be re-entitled uh, in 2015, including to that property. As you know, uh, the Vista Point project, which came before you several weeks ago, we anticipate that property potentially being re-entitled uh, during 2015. I've also outlined some other additional properties um, with regards to the Polo Club. We're in discussions uh, with the Polo Club, the residential component, not the commercial, um, about getting that property finally entitled. Uh, and potentially the property uh, at the south, um, I'm strike that northwest corner of Heggs Road and 135th Street will potentially be entitled this year. So that just highlights some of the potential entitlements that the village board uh, would be looking at in 2015. As you well know, economic development continues to be a critical component in the village of Plainfield. Uh, we've had an excellent work relationship with retail strategies and continue to look forward to working with retail strategies. But as it relates to economic development, we, as you know, we're working potentially with a major commercial developer on a Route 30 um, um, corridor itself. We, as you know, we just initiated a uh, tax increment finance district study. Uh, we're working with SP Friedman and Lakota on a major project, which will uh, entail a fair amount of, of our activity in 2015 as it relates to um, the TIF um, study, as it relates to the eligibility and the redevelopment plan working with Lakota. So that's something we, we're excited about and look forward to working with those two um, prestigious firms uh, in 2015. Uh, as, as it relates to other economic development, we anticipate um, several outlots, the Meyer projects coming through in 2016. We also are working with a developer uh, at uh, the Rose development at Route 30 on an outlot. Uh, we're also getting some interest at the Heritage Meadow, um, Meadows, which is the project at 119th and Route 59, as it relates to commercial interest in the one or two outlots that exist on that property. So in addition, we also had some discussions uh, recently about some uh, continued development interest on the South Route 59 corridor, concurrent with the more additional housing permits we're seeing in the South Side, specifically Springbank, the interest we're seeing in Springbank, we're beginning to see real commercial interest in South Route 59, specifically the Rizzi's property. As you know, uh, the police department worked extensively to clean that property up. We're getting a real active interest in that property. So that's something you'll probably see uh, as it relates to commercial development uh, this year. So that's just highlighting some of the commercial developments that we'll continue to, to uh, see for 2015. Uh, as it relates to planning, long-term planning, again, we're committed to, um, to long-term planning. We are currently working on an affordable housing plan. In accordance with state statute, we are mandated to basically come before the uh, village board with an affordable housing plan. So you would anticipate seeing that uh, this year. In addition, uh, we'll continue to work on updating the Tang plan where appropriate, the downtown plan. Um, also, the village has signed ordinance. We've had a number of variances uh, recently. The village board has recently approved. So we think there's an opportunity to look at the signed ordinance again and maybe tweak that, modify that in some areas consistent with some of the current development trends as it relates to economic development. And moreover, one plan that we previously identified um, last year, but we were, were not able to get to, uh, is a neighborhood plan. That's simply just trying to have better interconnection, street interconnection throughout the village as it relates to future development uh, in Plainfield. Now, as it relates to staffing needs, um, we again anticipate pretty much status quo with regards to having two certified planners. Um, but again, in a perfect world, we think there will be an opportunity potentially um, somewhere down the road for an economic development coordinator. We think that there's an opportunity to, to uh, have an economic development coordinator potentially who will continue to work with our economic development task force, which has been a great partner uh, with staff. As you know, the planning staff is one of the liaisons with our economic development task force. But we think there's an opportunity to have an economic development coordinator who would potentially work with the task force and the Will County Development uh, Corp on economic development. Or 
alternatively, potentially, which would something the village board can consider, is having an economic development planner and also somebody who is also concentrates in preservation. So those will be two potential options that the board may look at uh, or may consider as it relates to staffing uh, for the planning department. Uh, but I think we generally recognize that at this point it's generally probably status quo for staffing, but I wanted just to highlight those uh, potential opportunities if there is any uh, support for additional staffing uh, for the planning department as it relates to uh, economic development. Uh, again, we've had a great relationship with working actively with retail strategies on, on continued economic development, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you for the excellent report, Michael. And I, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, a few years ago, the planning department had uh, every cubicle and every office occupied and the workload that Michael and Jonathan uh, managed to take on is substantial. And uh, I want to recognize them for their efforts as well as Valerie, excuse me, Mary Lee, uh, in the planning department. Uh, I would certainly support economic development uh, with a planner that focused on <coughs> preservation. I have a few comments too. Uh, let me just go earlier part. Uh, talked about the polo club uh, component, residential component. They're talking about the entire area or just a piece of it? That's correct. There's a discussion with the partnership about the entitlement of the polo club, not the commercial component, not, not Dr. Two's property, no, but, but the commercial component. So there's a real potential that we would see the uh, entitlement finally of that property. You're not talking about the corner property of the Dr. Sue. That's you're correct. Not, you're talking about stuff where component. the polo club itself is. The actual is. polo club. Where the soccer fields are. That's correct. Oh, okay. That's different. Uh, the Village Center, uh, the same owners pursuing that we saw before, you know, five, six, seven years ago, whatever it was? Same owners, uh, potentially a new concept uh, with some major revisions. Um, we continue those discussions. Um, they're, they're working with a potential developer right now. So I'm pretty confident that you'll see a, uh, a re-entitlement of that property this year. Okay, good. Uh, go on to the second page. Uh, Affordable housing plan, the downtown plan, the site plan review, village sign ordinance, neighborhood plans. Can you prioritize those? I would assume your highest priorities are actually supporting developments as they occur, but these are a lot of things that go on in the background. Is there one of these or two of these most, more important than the others? Well, I think the affordable housing plan is probably has the highest pro priority because it's state mandated. Okay. Law. So um, that'll, lot, that'll surface sometime. There's this not year. a lot of discretion on that. It's something we have to bring before you um, just because of state mandates. Um, so we're working on that right now. Uh, some of the other long term plan, you're absolutely right. Our biggest priorities in titling new projects, whether it's commercial or um, residential, that's priority number one, serving, servicing the development community and actually the community itself. I forgot to discuss, but we spend a fair amount of time also working with neighborhoods, associations, answering questions, and a lot of, a lot of those um, challenges. So um, as you know, luckily we worked through most of the um, developments, which were basically um, uh, kind of stalled. We were able to get the last development, well, with one exception, f with the final lift done this year, Hidden River. So we're excited that we're basically through that that phase and most of the developments are very active and we're seeing development and construction which is great so we kind of work through that phase but now it's um working with new residential development uh which brings up something which is <laughs> missing that came up in the comprehensive plan <coughs> the southwest plan where did that go that dead? Is that something we still want to put on the list? Well, I think that's at the end of the day, it's really the village board's prerogative. It's, you know, there are several drafts of the plan. Um, there was a major revision to the plan. Um, I, w interestingly enough, I mean, the, I, we, I prepared an actual map just recently in the, the area, the southwestern plan area, as you know, is basically fully entitled for the most part. The question is, do we want to revisit that? And I think that issue will come up with the Vista Point re-entitlement. Re uh, with some of the higher densities that were approved um, based on our previous discussions in, in order to solidify our boundaries of Joliet, we did approve slightly higher densities down there. So m the most of the area is entitled. The question is, do we want to look at those, some of those entitlements again as it relates to the densities? And that, that question, will, as I highlighted, will come before the board probably this year because a developer for Vista Point is potentially looking at re-entitlement of their property, which is a fairly good chunk of the of the. Um, southwestern area and as you know spring bank is beginning to take off we have several uh, one developer who's building down there and we have a lot of interest in spring bank so 
it's really a question for the village board. Do you want to look at that area again, or it's, it's really your prerogative to decide? Well, from my point of view, I'd like to see us look at it. Uh, obviously, I think we should revisit the entitlements down there. And one of the keys in my mind that we have in place is now the single family design standards. Could people incorporate that? Then I think we're going to have good developments regardless of the density. And I think it would be very important. So I think we ought to look at that. So I'd add it to the list as something that serves my opinion anyway. So uh, beyond that, uh, the full time, you had two proposals uh, the economic uh, development coordinator. I'm not a strong supporter of having the village staff that position. I would rather see us go with alternative two, if you will, where we have a planner which uh, has does some of that and works with it but doesn't have the lead role. In my experience, if you're going to try to sell major corporations on coming into a town, you're better off not having the, the town people itself do the selling. You're better off having third par parties, uh, Buxton or the other people that we have working now represent us. Then we end up with a much stronger position. We support their efforts, but not try to say we're leading it. So of those alternatives, I would strongly support uh, the second one. I think you got to have more developers. As you know, I've talked to you every year. We come up with a budget that you got four people's worth of work and two people doing the work, as Trustee Fage has represented. So I'd like to see you get some additional help, because I think if we are expanding, uh, we're going to need it. Uh, I'd like to follow through on some of the things which we've uh, been promised. Make sure somebody's got time to go out and check on those two. Like, do they really design and, and build the way they're supposed to? That type of thing. So it's not just a building thing; it's an appearance thing, which is a planning department function. So, so that's at least where I'm coming from on some of those things. But I, I would, I would challenge your position, Mr. Lamb, with regard to economic development. We had uh, a former trustee who was. Uh, economic development director here many years ago, Larry Vopel, who uh, essentially secured every large uh, retail on Route 59, uh, including all the big box stores. And uh, so in terms of building a relationship with the building community and the, and the corporate community, I think, uh, I think Larry Vopel served us very well. Any and other that, questions or comments? Thank you for the input, um, and we look forward to this year. And perhaps with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Marquez and the building department's uh, the summary for 2016. Good evening. As you see in your packets tonight and also in the monthly reports that you receive throughout the year, the building department has experienced a consistent increase in not just new home permits but commercial build-outs, remodels, and miscellane miscellaneous permits. Along with this increase brings an automatic rise in inspections as well as administration work. As the proposed 2015-16 budget shows, we are requesting your consideration for converting our seasonal part-time inspector and administration assistant into permanent part-time positions. With a consistent increase of approximately 30 percent in just new home permits for the last few years, and with another apartment complex project starting this year, there is a factual need for at least these permanent part-time positions. By allowing the building department to implement the increase in hours for these positions, our department will be able to operate on a more efficient level in all areas. Although this will be a much, although this will, is a much needed adjustment, ultimately, I would ask that you would consider hiring a full-time cross-trained building, electric, and plumbing inspector. This will allow to help with the workload, but will save in hiring multiple inspectors that are only certified in one area of expertise. Our department consists of people who take their position very seriously, and our goal is to uh, improve the efficiency of the department by performing inspections in a, in a timely manner, along with a more consistent plan review turnaround. At this time and during the summer, and even today, we are experiencing a high volume of inspections that, have to, that we have to schedule two to four days out at some times. So, Everything's pretty much self-explanatory with the figures. I'd be happy, happy to answer any questions that you have. Again, from my point of view, I would support uh, the idea of a full-time cross-trained uh, or cross-qualified inspector. But how easy is it to find somebody like that? I mean, the, I have the one. building codes are <laughs> huge books. I'm sorry. I have one in mind right now, but normally 
since the uh, the downturn in the economy, even a plumbing inspector who has to has to have a state license, he has to be cross trained. And even when Don Bennett was here, he made sure that Greg and I, Greg the electrical inspector and myself, uh, were certified as residential inspectors also. So it's the norm now. Oh, you, okay, so you can find somebody. That part's good. With the growth that we're talking about in residential construction, the new developments that Michael just talked about, uh, seems to me if we're going to be responsive to developers and builders and make sure that they're, they're doing things properly, we need to support them so that this is the right kind of environment to get things done. And we don't want to be the bottleneck. We want to be able to be ahead of the game, if you will, and support that. We have a good reputation for being very helpful. We need to make sure we got the resources to continue that, in my opinion. So yes, I agree. I would support the full-time cross-trained, cross-qualified inspector. Thanks. I would agree with Trustee Lamb on uh, th that as well. I think it makes sense, actually, if we can um, you know, reduce the bottleneck at the point where we're trying to get, you know, a builder to get a home done, to have the inspections done so they can close and, and get everything completed. So if you're truly seeing the backlog and you think that will speed things up in your department, then I would agree with Trustee Lamb. Let, let's go ahead and do it. Thank you. We want to be clear that w w if that's something we do decide to go forward on, that we will have a formal process for doing that. I know that Mr. Marquez mentioned that there are some folks uh, close by that uh, do have those skills, but it also would require us to steal them away from another community. And uh, we friendly one. Well, we got poached, so I guess we'll poach back. I, you know, I'm jo <laughs> joking about that, but um, it, nevertheless, it, it will be formally. Um, we have a formal vetting process for all of our hires, as you know. So. And in summary, with the um, administration fund, building and planning, um, you'll see these be represented uh, probably at the end of February uh, globally along with the revenue projections that we'll have. And at that point, we'll also discuss staffing and, and um, staff's uh, summary as far as positions like what we've talked about tonight, um, what can be incorporated or what is most um, available as far as revenue sources. We're as far as the revenues are concerned, we'll bring that forward to the board more than likely at the next workshop. We were waiting a little bit longer to see how the state's been responding in relation to the new governor being seated um, and some of the information that we're receiving through the legislative area on um, income and things of that nature that are coming to the village. So you'll see that come forward um, and also we'll have the police um, presentation at our next workshop. So I just wanted to be clear. What you do have in the building department budget, again, is taking the seasonal part-time positions to a permanent part-time position. That what's currently in the budget we will discuss further as it relates to any new hires other than that going forward so I don't know if there's any other questions on the building division um, otherwise I'd be happy to go through the miscellaneous funds um, some of this we've talked to already um, as it relates to the capital fund but I'd like to go through it briefly and uh, take the time to answer any questions if you do have any that's the second packet that just so happens to have 11 pages as well <laughs> I couldn't do it twice, so <coughs> it'll probably be the only time this will happen. But page one is a summary of all the funds that we'll be discussing. So uh, if you'd like, we can just skip right through this. And page two begins our motor fuel tax fund, specifically coming from the state for purposes for um, capital roadway type improvements. Uh, salt purchase can be uh, taken out of here as well. We touched with this in the capital uh, budget when we talked about it late last year. Uh, what you'll see is in street improvements, about a million dollars. That's part of our roadway maintenance plan. Uh, Alan will be talking about this again when we bring capital back to the board for one more look before it gets approved. So he can get into a little more of the details as to what we're speaking to when we get to um, the capital plan as well. But if the board remembers, we were going to allocate a million dollars of the MFT funds towards street maintenance, annual street maintenance. Um, and that's generally what that is. The $2 million transfer to general can help offset costs for salt as well as electricity relating to street lighting. Um, so the 200000 will well suffice uh, our purchases that we have out of our corporate fund. Um, page 3 and page 4 represent our bond and interest fund. Uh, this encompasses a majority of our debt that the village has and I say majority uh, the other portions that aren't referenced in here would be within our water and sewer fund if there's any specific debt relating to water and sewer only that's in our water and sewer fund but other than that this represents the other 
issues that the village has outstanding. Um, on page three, the property tax revenue line item is the one debt issue that we levy for uh, that was approved at the end of December. This is coming to a close, I believe 2019. Uh, that particular debt issue will be uh, matured, paid off. So that's the good news there. The rest of the revenue, quote unquote, revenue sources are relating to transfers from capital as well as a portion from water and sewer relating to some uh, debt issues that have a, a portion of water and sewer component within them and then some are capital related as well. So this just really outlines the majority of our debt service that we pay from year to year. And as you can see, oh, go ahead. Can I ask a question about uh -huh. page three? Um, <clears throat> property tax revenue, mm -hmm. <coughs> actual 2012 was 113 219 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, the proposed expected budget for 16 is 116 correct you know what percentage of uh, the tax bill that re that represents well our total tax levy is just over 5.3 million so uh, it's about 100 it's only 116,000 of that total again 5.3 million Thank you. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from year to year, the attempt is to make the debt service level. Um, the spike in 12 and 15 are related to refundings. Uh, that's why you'll see the jumps on the expenditures. But otherwise, we're running right around 3.1 million in debt service payments within this fund. Page five is our tort immunity. This is where we pay our um, liability, property casualty, workers' comp insurance. Um, this is the revenue sources do come from property taxes. This was approved uh, through the levy process back in December. Um, and we are anticipating utilizing um, a small portion toward a fund balance that's there. These funds within tort immunity can only be used to be paid for these uh, purposes. So we try to run a, you know, not too high fund balance. Uh, that's why you can see sometimes within the revenue side, one year will feed into some of the fund balance more than others. But this year, about 45,000 is anticipated to be utilized in fund balance. Gracie, what is crime policy? Crime policy is through the police department, and that's a renewable policy um, every f five years, if I remember correctly. Um, at the point that we had it in fiscal 12, it was a separate policy. I do not believe it's separate anymore. I believe it's standard along the um, liability insurance. And so that will probably go away next fiscal year from a line item on the sheet. On the uh, <coughs> workman's comp, uh, 325000 is, of course, a lot of money. Uh, do we expect the uh, new governor to have some impact on it? Because that's one of the things I think has been a steady complaint by businesses the enormous cost of that they have to bear of that. Do we expect an improvement in that? Uh, any hope of that improvement? Probably not. And I would say workers' comp is getting smaller and smaller as far as um, providers for entities like us. So when the market gets smaller, the rates usually do not go down. They usually increase because the there's not as much uh, supply, for lack of a better term. The demand is there, and they can provide the insurance. So. Um, as far as workers' comp claims, the village is right on par. There's been no um, amazingly outstanding claims. And so what we're seeing in spikes is not directly related to a whole, um, a large number of claims within the village. In this uh, workers' comp and liability, we are a part of the SWARM group, which is our risk manages management group. So we pool our experience along with other communities to help keep our costs low. As Brian talked about, uh, we benefited by our good performance in health. Do we benefit here, or are we just picking up uh, our share of uh, the total? Well, as with anything, each community will have peaks and valleys. Um, the experience, though, tends to be streamlined then because of that. So we haven't seen any um, large rate increases because of another municipality's demise, for lack of a better term. Um, it helps to really kind of keep things status quo. And really, the only impacts we're seeing are more market-driven as opposed to large claims that we're bearing for another municipality within the pool. You're right to bring up the question uh, whether the governor intends on making this a priority. Uh, certainly, that is something that has been mentioned. 
Um, that being said, we don't see any legislation or anything out there for this particular um, uh, General Assembly session. So that's why we're being a little pessimistic that if there is to be anything, it probably will be in future fiscal years. Uh, I do know that in listening to the uh, Lieutenant Governor speak, um, there was intimation as it relates to local government distributive funds uh, possibly being used as part of their budget solving uh, uh, strategy. Um, one of the uh, uh, olive branches that was handed out was that at least we might see some type of relief as it relates to uh, uh, workers' comp. So. I'm not seeing a one-for-one one trade off, <laughs> but still nevertheless, um, yeah, it is something that at least they acknowledged and recognized. As uh, Tracy Pleckham points out, uh, we are fairly limited on uh, who we can get to insure us for workers' comp, um, you know, municipal and, uh, you know, public corporations have a series of other rules and it does certainly limit the number of uh, folks that are interested in um, providing services to that market. We do have a broker that goes out for bids um, it two every three years, just depending on the, what's happening in the marketplace um, and what component we're speaking to. Uh, they keep a pulse on the market, and if they feel that it's necessary to try to get bids, we will do that you know, every year if we had to. But um, they work very well with the, with the group, and we've been, we've been successful with that as well. <laughs> Um, page six is our audit fund, and specifically for the village's annual audit. Uh, this is collected through property tax revenues as well. Um, current auditor is Sikich, uh, if the board recalls, and what is being budgeted is 42000 and that includes any possible single audit or additional valuations relating to the audit. So uh, l this estimate for this current fiscal year, it was at 38000 uh, Staff anticipates the proposed budget to be at 42 again these um, funds can only be utilized for this purpose so whatever is not expended in fiscal 16 will roll to potentially 17 and we can utilize those funds there but staff's comfortable with um, based on the contract language and any additional possible audits that need to happen as it relates to single audit um, that 42,000 is sufficient um, page 7 and page Eight relates to the police pension fund. Police pension fund is primarily driven um, from the employee contributions, which is 9.91% of their salary, and then the employer contributions, which is being proposed at 950000 this year, and that is um, something that the village levies for as well through property tax revenues. Um, everything else is relating to investment income, and um, it is reflected conservatively within this report. Page 8 represents the expenditures that the pension fund has as an estimate. And within the police pension, always um, you will notice that there will be a, a fund balance at the end of the fiscal year because the intent, obviously, is to increase this fund. So um, the year, uh, fiscal year 16, we're uh, budgeting about a $1.7 million surplus. Um, in the 14 actual, they actually were at 2.5 million as a surplus, so. Uh, Tracy, on page seven, or maybe chief, um, realized gain, loss, unrealized gain and loss. Unrealized gain and loss is at 300,000 for 2016. Correct. 400,000 this year. That's where it's estimated as is today. Those are valuations that happen um, at the fiscal year end, obviously, from month to month, we'll get notices from the pension fund. Uh, the pension fund is managed separately by a third party uh, investment consultant that the pension board has. And as you can see in fiscal 14 and 13, uh, their actuals were substantially higher than that, but um, past uh, results don't always mean future uh, results will be the same. So the staff makes an attempt to try to conservatively guess where the gain or loss will be at the fiscal year end. So this is where we're at right now, based on what we're seeing this current fiscal year. 
Revolts, results have been improving on investment returns um, across the board. They haven't been glowing, but they've been better, and especially when you're um, investing in more than just a money market, which is what the police pension fund can invest in. <laughs> they're getting a, a lot better returns. And IMRF reflects the same um, positive returns throughout the budget. You'll notice that IMRF um, contributions actually look like they're reduced, and it's only because the market has done better, so the village's portion of IMRF is actually less than what it was in the past. Page nine relates to the DARE fund, which is um, specific purposes for the DARE program. Uh, contributions are taken in within this fund, um, and obviously expenditures are taken out. Um, if the board has any questions relating to DARE, I'm sure the chief can answer more specifics to it. We're reflecting um, roughly 13,000 to come in for next fiscal year, um, and then just uh, to be conservative, we've got an expenditure of about 22,000, um, just based on this current year's uh, estimated amount that was expended. They do have a fund balance of about 14,000 that can be utilized only for the sole purpose. Uh, page 10 is the village's current um, TIF district, the TIF fund. Uh, we did touch uh, somewhat on this over the capital budget overview, and, and when we bring capital back, we'll probably touch on it again. Alan will speak to the specifics. Um, but fiscal 16 is proposing to uh, work towards the um, enhancements within the, the village's streetscape. Uh, it needs a refresh. Uh, I think that we've talked about that a couple of times at different workshops. But the contractual services that you see listed for about 700,000 as a portion of the refresh. Staff anticipates to start that process this next fiscal year. Um, in addition to that, the transfer to capital fund is relating to the initial investment within the streetscape program um, that was expended originally out of the village's capital fund. So basically a payback to the capital fund. Um, it was about seven million that was expended in the beginning uh, of the program. So I know we'll bring the, ba the specifics back as to what would be expended within the TIF fund and obviously throughout the fiscal year the contractual services will come to the board for approval when when the bids go out. We also included a line item for the potential of the uh, trolley barn project uh, that went before the plan commission uh, last week uh, that should be coming before you uh, for consideration in the in the coming weeks. Um, they have a little bit of a hang-up as it relates to um, easements and rights of way with regard to IDOT and uh, Main Street. Uh, but still, nevertheless, we're expecting that to come forward. And so we've set aside a line item toward uh, participating in the facade and, uh, grant with them. Uh, so if I read this properly, then uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, if we spend what we're expecting to, we'll be down to uh, about uh, $200,000 in the TIF fund by the end of the year. That's correct. Getting important things done, but uh, we need to be careful as we get other facade requests so that we recognize we don't have a whole lot of cushion left anymore if we do these. But these are both very important things. The trolley barn, uh, yeah, they do have some IDOT issues, but uh, it would be a great improvement to have uh, that facade looking decent. And uh, the proposal is quite interesting, so I'm hoping we can move that forward because it will mean a lot to that part of town. So. I don't mean to get off subject, but uh, did I read somewhere in some plan that the uh, the west wall of that building will come down? Yes, the entire west section the will be barn removed. Itself? No, I'm not sorry. the trolley barn, but no, no, the no, no, no. Uh, additional the wing addition. that was built um, when Raylock was in there. On the west. On the west end, correct. Yeah, the trolley barn itself will be maintained. The people who I own it or do own it, no, no. well, just they're going to do the east part. They're going to make that their office building, and the trolley barn can be made into something. But they're getting rid of a part that uh, doesn't serve any purpose and probably not in very good shape. So it's a good plan. I'm amazed that uh, they're willing to do all that because the trolley barn is a throw-in. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not what they're looking enough they're investing in. They're willing to donate to the village and more or less, uh, or to the community, not necessarily right. the village. I mean, they're not giving it to us, but. It's, uh, it's promising, so looking forward to it. And the last fund that we have is our alcohol enforcement fund. Uh, alcohol, alcohol fines are uh, deposited within to this fund. 
And the revenues are transferred back to general to help offset the costs for the police-related alcohol enforcement matters that they do. So um, that was a summary of the, the budget that we wanted to present tonight. In addition to that, um, back in 2010, uh, staff presented and the board adopted the financial policies of the village and part of the policy is that we'd bring this back to the board for review on an annual basis to make sure there aren't anything that we'd like to look at to amend or to update or if you have any questions on any of, of the policies that are listed. Um, it was adopted in February of 10. If the board recalls back in April of 2012, it was amended and it was specifically, specifically relating to Gasby's standards in the fund balance language um, and the fund balance policy. So they had changed some language within the fund balance and we had to commit things instead of reserve things and things of that nature. So we had to update the policies for some language change. And then last year, um, we redefined some of the fund balance policies and made them a little more specific as to what to do um, with some of the fund balances within the village. So that was the modification that happened last April. At this time, staff doesn't have any recommendations for updates um, to the financial policies or the exhibits attached. Um, we're still reviewing them based on what the current market's doing. Um, we may review them a little bit more over as the months go on over the summer um, and come back with some recommendations. But at this point, um, the policies are in place. It it's follows state statutes and as far as the um, investment policies are concerned and we're comfortable with leaving them as is but we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have on them I have a, com a comment more than a question Tracy um, under financial goals on the first page the first bullet point says to provide full value for each tax dollar and I think it's important that all of us remember that continually that what funds this building what funds your salaries what funds everything we do comes from taxpayer dollars um, I, I'm not proposing any modification, but if, if something could be stated as an introductory comment that puts that as the premise for which all finances are managed in the village, am I making sense? Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be very important, very important. It fits in quite well, actually. We have a mission statement within the uh, budget document, but uh, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, looking through it again, uh, I think it provides uh, you know, objectives, what you need to be trying to do. And Trustee Faye just mentioned one of the more important ones, but I also say make, maintain a strong credit rating. The financial community is very important to us. That, that's real dollars to us. And then the quality of life. So I think the financial goals are spelled out very nicely. Uh, the checks and balances in here are excellent. I wouldn't change any of them. I think they keep us uh, on track. Uh, they've worked very well, and I would certainly suggest we maintain them. If you have suggestions for updating based on what happens this summer, fine. But uh, right now, it's, uh, as I think I said the last couple of years, is a document I think every municipality ought to have. Great policies. Uh, it keeps a lot of people out of trouble, and it's, uh, did a great job putting it together in the first place. And uh, the little tweaks have been nice and additions, but uh, it's still a great policy. Yeah, one of the things that when we were going through the rating agency reviews um, years ago was that we didn't really have them all uh, the policies all in one area. They were they were installed instilled and in different places, but they weren't necessarily centralized. And it makes the document a lot easier to, to work with, a lot easier to find, a lot easier to use when it's all in one place. So um, back in 2010, we finally decided to, to kind of combine everything that was on the books and enhance it a little bit more, and it worked out well. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for the uh, feedback uh, tonight. Um, as uh, Mrs. Plecka mentioned, we will uh, bring the uh, police department uh, forward at the next Committee of the Whole. Um, and then uh, we'll have uh, further discussion on capital, uh, revenue uh, estimates. Tracy and I are off to uh, meet with some folks to do some further uh, 
long-term visioning on our five-year uh, revenue estimates. Um, that will give us then a chance to circle back with the Village Board and have a further discussion uh, with regard to the identified positions. I really do appreciate the feedback that we've gotten so far. You'll notice as well we are, were asked for some additional, to provide some additional information following the presentation by uh, Mr. Persons. Uh, that was in your packet as well. Hopefully that provided you with some feedback. Uh, and again, we'll pick up on those conversations at uh, future Committee of the Whole meetings. Second. Motion was made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries.